morning, Mercy Church. If you're ready to worship, let's go ahead and stand on our feet and give God some praise in the house. Come on. <laughs> Wake up the person beside you. Say, God is near. Listen, I was reading in Psalms chapter 75, and he starts it out just like that. He says, we celebrate God. We give God thanks because he is near. Come on, church. I want to remind you this morning as we are getting ready to worship that whatever it is that you're going through, God is already here. Amen. Can we just slip up holy hands in this house and just welcome his presence, knowing that he is about to do something special? God, today we honor you. God, today we celebrate that you are near. God, we thank you, God, that regardless of the trials, regardless of the frustrations and the struggles that we have to deal with in this life, you are always with us, you are for us, and God, we have victory in you. God, today we set our minds on the things above. God, we don't set our minds on the distractions of this world, but God, we fix our hearts and our minds on you this morning. God, I pray that we will just open ourselves up to receive from you. But God, in this moment, we will also give back to you. We will give back to you the praise that you deserve in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Good morning, Mercy Church. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Come on and put those hands together. You know, the Bible says to let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you've got breath in your lungs, you've got a reason to praise the Lord with us this morning. Oh. I'll praise in the valley and praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure and praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered and praise when surrounded. Oh, cause praise is the water my enemies drown in. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And praise the Lord, oh, my soul. See, I'll praise when I feel it, and I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know that you're still in control. Because my praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Oh, my praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. Sing this out. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise you, God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, See, I won't, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, I will. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh my soul. Oh, yeah. We praise you, God. you're sovereign praise cause you raised praise cause you rose and defeated the grave i'll praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true praise cause there's nobody greater than you i'll praise, praise cause, cause you're sovereign praise cause you raised praise cause you rose and defeated the I'll grave i'll praise praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true oh and praise cause there's nobody greater sing i'll praise cause you're sovereign Praise cause you're Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause you're Sing that again. Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you're Cause you reign, oh God. Praise cause you rose and defeated. I'm gonna praise. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'm gonna praise you, God. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I'm gonna praise you. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing, I won't be quiet. 
you're sovereign praise cuz you reign praise cuz you rose and defeated I'm gonna praise praise cuz you're faithful praise cuz you're true praise cuz there's no declare that this morning with every voice I'll praise cuz you're sovereign praise cuz you oh has he been faithful to anybody oh I praise praise cuz there's nobody I'm gonna praise you God Praise cause you rose and defeated. I praise cause you're faithful and you're true, oh God. Praise cause you're that one more time. I praise cause you're sorry. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated. I praise cause you're faithful. And I praise true. And praise cause there's nobody greater than you. quiet. We need to be praising him with everything that we have within us this morning. He said if you have breath, check your pulse. Are you still breathing? You got a reason to praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Mm. Y'all got to start it off good this morning. Amen. <laughs> I don't know who turned the air on outside, but it feels good to me. <laughs> we had a hot snap and the Lord decided, mm, we're going to give you just a few more days of cool weather. Praise God. Listen, if you are a guest of Mercy Church this morning, we're so thankful you chose to be with us. We've got a connect card in one of the seats right in front of you. If you take just a quick moment during service, fill that card out for us. Take it to our connect center out in the foyer. We'd like to exchange that for a gift just to tell you how much we appreciate you being with us here at Mercy. The Palmetto Gathering Senior Adult Retreat will be at the South Carolina COG up in Malden, South Carolina. It's on May 24th and 25th. Early bird registration is $40, and that's good through May the 1st. After May the 1st through the 15th, registration goes up to $50 a person. So make sure you take, care, take advantage of the early bird registration. You can go to sccog.com slash events to register. If you have uh, questions, they've got flyers out at the Connect Desk. You can also see Brother Wayne Derrick or Chris sister Christine Looney um, for more details about that event. Our ladies are going to have a ladies' tea on May the 11th. It'll be in the Family Life Center from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, ladies of all ages are encouraged to attend. Uh, go to Mercy for... A Aiken.org slash women events so that you can register an RSVP so they'll have a good count and make sure they got plenty of tea for y'all to drink. Amen. 
And we have four convenient ways for you to give and tithe and offerings. We've got our giving boxes located at the back of the sanctuary. We've got a kiosk out in the foyer. You can go to mercyforaken.org, click on the donate button, or use the app on your mobile device. Pastor Murphy. The thing's on. There we go. I'm so glad to see you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is beautiful outside, and it's even prettier in here. How about that? Because we've come in here to worship the Lord. Praise God. If you come to worship the Lord today, I've come to worship the Lord. I've come to praise him because he's been so good. Hallelujah. Today, I want to give you an opportunity to give. I just want to say, I say this from time to time as your pastor, I, I thank you for what you're doing, for how you're giving. I know the Lord is blessing you, and because he's blessing you, you're blessing him, and vice versa, because you're blessing him, he blesses you, and that's just how it works. And uh, we've, uh, we've started on our renovation on our kitchen. Uh, if you go back there right now, <laughs> you will say, <gasps> Because there ain't no walls, there ain't no cabinets. I mean, we're taking it all down, and we're going to try to finish the clean side. We've got enough money to, uh, that's been raised for the, for the kitchen, uh, and so we've started on that, and we'll get that side finished, and then when the rest of the money comes in, we'll finish the, the cooking side of it. We've got some of that equipment, but uh, the main part will be the, the hood vent that... Uh, goes above the, the stove, and, uh, and it's, it's pretty expensive. But anyhow, we're going to go ahead and get started on some of it, and, uh, and we're praying that God would just bring in the rest and that uh, we'd be able to complete that, and, uh, and it would be a great commercial kitchen. And, and um, also, it could be a soup kitchen when we get to that, that place. When God gets us ready to get there, we'll be ready for them. Amen. Praise God. I want to give you an opportunity to give today. Like uh, Brother Jason said, we've got two giving boxes in the back. You can give at any time of the service and uh, just uh, give as God has given to you. I want to pray today, and I want you to pray with me. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Father God, we love you today. We thank you for all your blessings of life. We thank you, God, that this morning we woke up and we had a, a nice little rain going on. God walked outside, and it was cool. God, I was walking to the office from the church today and I was just smelling the spring smells. I love this time of the year. It's refreshing. It's when things start to come alive, God. I'm so thankful. It reminds me every time, every spring, it reminds me of what you've done for us. You died for us, but then you rose for us and you came back alive. And because you live, we can live and have life and that more abundantly. You give us life, God. Things die out of our lives as we get saved. And then as we get saved, things come alive. And it's you being alive inside of us. So I'm praying, God, today that you would bring people alive today, God. Let them shake off the old. Let them die to the old man. Let them walk in the newness of life, I pray, God. Father, today I'm asking you, God, that you bless your people in this house, God. Don't let one person walk out the doors of this house that's unsaved. If they're unsaved, God, let the Spirit of God deal with them so gently and bring them to a place of prayer that they might call on the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, hallelujah, our Lord and Savior and your Son. We pray, God, today that you would minister to every hurting body, God, that is sick in body, Lord, because we know that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And I'm asking you today, God, God, that you would heal us in a mighty way, God. Heal every person, God, that's in the hospital, those that's been sick in body, those that's had surgeries, God. I pray, God, that you would strengthen them today, God, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Let your healing virtue flow into their body, God, and let them know that they've been touched by the mighty hand of God. I pray, Father, today that you would just touch those, God, that are in need because you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider, God. I'm asking you, Father, Lord, that you would provide for them, God. This day, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would win every battle for us, God, because you are Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner, the Lord, our victory. I pray, God, and I'm asking you, God, that you would bring victory to your people today. I'm asking you, God, that you would bless your people in this house today as they give, and I pray, Father, that you would bless everything that's given. We ask it in that name that's all above all other names, that name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Somebody say amen in the house of God. Praise God. Listen, 
Brother Don Cedars, our missionary, one of our missionaries is coming. He wants to come around today. Listen, he is, he is leaving to go to Peru this Thursday. And I want us to pray for him before he comes off this stage today, before I walk off this stage. We're going to pray for him. But before he prays, or before I pray and we pray for him, he wants to show you a couple of things that he's doing there and what's being accomplished in Peru where he's going. God bless you. Thank you. You got a mic. Praise God. Can you give God praise? Can you just stretch your hand this way? We're going to pray for Brother Don. Listen, this is a, a very taxing trip that he takes. Uh, he flies, takes many plane trips there. When he gets there, uh, he'll be busy. And uh, when he gets back, he'll be wore out. I promise you, he'll be tired. Let's pray for his strength. Let's pray for his safety. Let's pray that the Spirit of God move in such a mighty way there when he gets there and when they dedicate this building to the Lord. Let's pray for Miss Dory, that God just be with her as she's here and, God, and, and just pray that God have his hand on from him from the time he leaves until he gets back. Let's pray. Father God, we love you today. We praise your name. Once again, God, we pray for all the Lord for Brother Don Cedars, God. You've called him to be a missionary, God, and he is going. God, with your help, Lord, God, this place that they've built, Lord, it, it, it is a blessing. God, it is a miracle. Father, there's many people going to be touched. Many people going to be saved. Many people going to be healed right there in that facility, God. They're going to be helped help for you are a very present help Lord and I'm asking you God today that you would just be with brother Don as he travels God this Thursday that you would give him traveling mercies every every uh, van he gets on to travel every plane he hops on God to fly God every airport and when he gets there God in Peru from from when he gets to the airport till he gets settled in God be with him protect over him God every day every every uh, thing that he item that he goes through there God 
Lord, as he goes through his agenda, God, there, Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless him, Lord. Let the anointing of the Lord be upon him, Father, when he is a part of the dedication service there in Peru. I pray, God, that you would give him traveling mercies back home, God. Let it be a successful time there, God, in Peru for Brother Don. Keep Miss Dory safe, God, here at home, Lord. I pray, God, that you would be with her, God. Protect over her, God. Watch over this family, God, and bless this event, God. Bless this trip, God. Bless this missionary trip, God, in the name of Jesus. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor for everything that you do for Brother Don, God, and this trip, Lord, and that facility. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Can somebody give Jesus a great big hand? Thank you, Pastor. Love you, buddy. Love you. Will you stand with us as we praise the Lord? No matter what happens on this earth, it doesn't take him by surprise, and he's strong, and he's mighty, and he has a solution for everything that we need, and he's making provision for Brother Don as he goes. Everything, his step is going to be ordered of the Lord. Amen? We want that for our lives right here, and whether wherever we may go, I just praise God that if we just open our hearts and don't limit the King of glory. Realize his greatness in your life and don't limit him. Amen. Let's just give him glory this morning. Let his praises ring forth and fill this place, God. We desire to see your glory, Lord Jesus. Open our spiritual eyes and let us see the truth of the living word of God. Dwell and move and have your being inside of us. Thank you that you are a provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our healer, Lord Jesus, Father. You deliver us, God, and there are times that you will walk us through, but no matter what, we are victorious through the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God.
with you, Jesus. I just want you. 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 Nobody else will do. Nobody else will do. I just want you. 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 You. I just want you, I just want Nobody you. Else will do. Nobody else will do.
So 
Then scatter your feelings to the wind and walk by faith. It's not how you feel. How many times have you said, I feel this way, I feel that way, but I say unto you, declare what my word says. Declare by faith. Declare your want for me in this way. Lord, I want you more than anything this world has to offer. I give myself to you today with no reservation, walk in me and know that I have prepared you and will show you the way, says the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Come on, can you worship him Praise in the house God. this morning? Praise the name of the Lord. Can you worship him in the house? Praise God. Somebody you. praise him in the house. Somebody lift your hands to him. How many of you know that if you want him, you can have him. Anybody in here want the glory of God? Anybody want the glory of God? Is that the one thing that you seek? Is that the one thing that you're asking for? For his glory? For his glory? For his glory? Moses got to that place. He said, God, he said, you've called me to a, you've called me to a ministry. And this ministry is way beyond me. I'm telling you now, if the ministry that God has given you doesn't feel like it's way beyond you, then maybe you're not called. Because I'm telling you, when God calls you into a ministry, you just sit and you wonder and you ponder and you think, God, how can I do this? I can't do this. No, you can't, but he can. And the only way it can happen is it's got to happen from him through you. That's the only way. And Moses, he said, God, I can't do it. I'm a man of, of, of a slow tongue. He said, I can't do this thing. I can't do it. God kept on nudging him. God kept on nudging him. He finally went. And when he went, when he got there, it didn't look like it was going to go his way. You read it. Just start reading the book of Exodus and you'll find out. Everything Moses did, it didn't work. And everything he did, it didn't work. And everything he did, it didn't work. The first nine plagues and it just looked like it was going to fail and the people started complaining against him Moses had an enemy called Pharaoh and then the people was coming against him he felt like he was all by himself but the whole time God was with him I'm telling somebody in the house today you might feel like you're all alone you feel like you're all alone don't don't 
Let the devil lie to you. You're not alone. God is with you. God is for you. In a moment, in a moment, God will come on the scene for you. He said, okay, Moses. He said, I've had enough of Pharaoh. I've had enough of the devil. You got one more thing to do and watch me do my thing. They killed that lamb. They put that blood on the door. The death angel came by, killed every firstborn in, the, in Egypt. They said, get out of here. Moses and the people left. They left with the gold. They left with the silver. They left with the covering of the blood. They made their exit. And every time they got somewhere, there was another battle and God won the victory. They'd come to the next place, there'd be a battle. God won the victory. They'd come to another place, there was a battle. God gave them the victory. Finally, God got sick of the people because they kept on complaining and murmuring. He said, you take them, Moses. I'm not going. Moses said, God, you brought me this far. I can't go without you. I can't do it without you, God. God, if you don't go, I'm not going. That's how I feel today. If God ain't going with me, I can't go. Because I know it's not about me. If you think it's about you, you watch, you, you watch yourself. You'll fall flat on your face. It ain't about you. If God don't go with you, I'm telling you, you won't win that battle. Don't you try it without him. Moses said, God, I want to see your glory. I've got to see your glory. God said, okay, Moses, I'll do this thing. You got to come by yourself, though. Now, I, I, I let you bring Aaron with you thus far, but Aaron can't come no further than, than to the bottom of the mountain. You got to come by yourself. I'm going to show you and you alone my glory. I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to put my hand over you. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to pass by you. I'm going to show you my hind parts. I'm going to remove my hand, and you're going to see all my glory. I'm going to proclaim my name to you, and you're going to see all my goodness. And it was so wonderful for Moses. When he walked off that mountain, his face was shining like a big old LED light bulb. He was glowing with the glory of God because Moses won't. I want to ask you a question today. Do you want it? Do you want the glory of God? I pray for that. I pray for it. I'm not asking for all these other things. I'm asking for God's presence to show up in this house. I don't know how to grow a church. I watch other places and they say, well, you got to do this and you got to do this and they step program. Well, if you do these 12 things, if you do them five things, if you do them 10 things, I want one thing. I want his glory in the house, period. And if God can't grow it, then it can't be grown the right way. And that's exactly how I feel about it. I don't want it to come any other way. I want his glory. I want the presence of God to come down in the house so strong. I pray all the time, God, don't let anybody walk out this door and be unsaved. Convict their heart. I mean, I pray God convict them so bad that they can't turn around and look at those back doors. God convict them so bad they can't leave under the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I've prayed before God, make them so sick they can't lift their head. And I've watched God make them sick and turn their life around and get delivered from things that they had no business getting. The devil got them in it, but God got them out of it. I'm telling you, he's still in the getting out of business. Oh, I'm telling you, he can still get you out of what the devil thought he had you bound with. I want the glory of God. I pray God don't let a Jezebel spirit walk in this place and be able to stay. Do one or two things, God. Either deliver them from that Jezebel spirit or lift them up and they got to go. 
just like that demon, just like that man that had those demons called Legion, Jesus said one word, go. And they had to go. And they ran in the swine and they had to run down the swine, ran down the hill and were drowned in the ocean. Us, even the pig didn't want no demon. I don't want no demon in this house. If there's anybody that's got demons, that demon either needs to come out or they got to go. Can't remain here. I pray for the glory of God to come down in the house. And when God's glory comes down in the house, nothing else can abide. Praise God. Oh, do you want to see his glory? Do you want to see his glory? Let's sing that one more time. Sing it one more time. Come on. You sing it. You ask for it today. Anybody want his glory? The glory of the Lord. Anybody need the glory of the Lord? Show me your glory, Lord. You're all I want. You're all Anybody want the glory of the Lord? Anybody need the glory of the Lord? Show me your glory. Anybody want God? Anybody need God? What do you have need in the house today? Praise God. What do you need in the house today? If you need it, you need to come get it. It's available for you today. The glory of the Lord's in the house today. You're all I want. Do you need it? You're Do you want it? Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Sometimes you got to come by yourself. Major, sometimes you got to call on God. 
for yourself. Show me your glory. Sometimes others can't come with you. Sometimes you need to be able to touch the hand of the Lord and the Lord touch you. The glory of the Lord, the hand of the Lord upon you. Touch your God to the top of a head to the soul of a feet. Let the hand of Almighty God be upon Sister Molly today. Strengthen her today, God. Wrap your arms of love around her today, God. Minister to him, God, touch Brother Dale, God. Touch him, touch his body, God. Strength.
over here one day this week well probably two or three days this week I'll come in here and I don't never cut the lights on because there's lights coming through the windows and through the doors and, and those doors are normally propped open and so there's a light but it's low it's a just it's, it's dim and I'm walking through this place and as I'm walking through this place I'm praying just me and God me and Jesus, me and the Holy Ghost. And I'm just walking through here. And I got in prayer in a big way this past week. And I was standing here. And and I don't know if I don't know if you just get real with God, but I get real with him sometimes. Anybody get real with God sometimes? I can't pray those high lofty prayers. Oh heavenly father. That's I just talk to him like I'm talking to my friend. I talk to him like I'm talking to Angie, I talk to him like I'm talking to one of my, my children, or I talk to him like I'm talking to my dad. I, I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just talking to him, and, and I start getting real with God. Anybody ever get real with God? I said, God, I said, there's some stuff I, I don't understand, and I know there's some things I won't never understand. Maybe when I get to heaven, I'll understand. I said, but God, I said, God, here's one thing. I said, here's one thing, God, I can't understand. How is it, God? that the church always seems, and I'm just telling you, I was being real, always seems to need finances so that ministry can go forth. That's pretty real, right? I can't understand, God, when you own the cattle on a thousand hill that we ain't got enough money to cause every facet of ministry to come to this place. I said, God, I don't understand why we still owe a million and a half dollars on this church. $1.5 million on this property. God, there's nothing too hard for you to do, God. I think it ought to be paid for. What about you? I said, God, I don't understand why it's still not being paid for. I said, God, I don't understand why we need an $80,000 pole building in the back and we ain't got enough finances to put it in. God, I don't understand why we need about a $50,000 uh, box truck that we might be able to pick the food up that we supply for that food pantry. And God, I don't understand why we ain't got $70,000 to build that commercial kitchen so that we can have a soup kitchen there, God. I don't understand, God, why. It's always the church seems to be struggling with money, God. I'm not, I'm not complaining, God. I just don't understand it, God. I'm asking you, Lord. I said, God, I'm asking you for help. Anybody that ask God for help? I said, God, but before I prayed all that, this is what I did. I stood right here in front of this pulpit. I looked up to that 
to that uh, ceiling right there and, and I, I said, God, open the door over this church. I said, God, open the door over this church. Open heaven over this church that every person walks in the door gets saved. Open the door over this church, God, that every demon has to flee from this place, God. Open the door, God. I want to see your glory. And after I started praying that, then I said, God, we need your help. I said, God, if we paid this, this thing off, I said, that would open up $15,000 a month. I said, a month. I said, God, we could hire full-time this and full-time that and full-time. I mean, from nursery worker all the way, all the way to the senior adult full-time and that they could be here and there would be no lack. I said, God, sometimes I don't know which way I'm running, whether I'm going that way or going that way, God. I need help. That's what I said. I said, God, I need help. We need help. And so, so let, me, let me just talk to you for a minute. Let me tell you what happened. So I'm standing here, and I wasn't just standing here because when I pray, I'm usually walking. I was over there. I was back there by that back wall. I'm over there by that back wall. I'm over here by the piano, and I'm walking, and I'm all out here in the middle, and I get right, I get right about here. Sometimes you just need to know where you're at. And, and I mean, I was in a spot, and I got right about here, and I, I, I had my head up like this right here, and I said, God, I said, I've asked. And I said, and I know prayer is communication. God, there's one thing that I know that's wrong with all preachers is we can talk the horns off a billy goat because you've given us the gift of gab, and that's why we preachers a lot of times. I said, but God, I know that I need to hush because I need to listen. I mean, no, that's prayer. A lot of times we talk, 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 talk. We, out, we lay out our Santa Claus list. We lay out our murmurs and our complaints to God. And then we hop up and run off. We don't give him a chance to talk back. But you ain't prayed until you stand still and you hear God. That's, that's communication. So I'm standing right here in this spot right here. And I said... Speak, Lord, your servant's listening. I stood right here all by myself, quiet in the dark. I'm looking this way, and I had my head like that right there. About 10 seconds went by, and I hadn't heard nothing. All of a sudden, I heard God speak to me. He said, son, what do you see? I had my eyes open. I'm looking up in the... And when God speaks to you, he don't speak to me like he speaks to you and he don't speak to you like he speaks to me. He speaks to you how he knows how you communicate and how your mind works and how you process stuff. And, I, and I've always been a realist, so I just told the truth. And when I say this, this ain't gonna give you no revelation, I promise you. You ain't finna get none. I say, God, I see a square ceiling tile. I mean, look, they're everywhere. You know what he said to me? He said, which one? I'm thinking to myself, they all look alike. How am I going to describe this thing? But God knows me and he knows where my mind goes. And he knows that numbers are always in my head. And I say, God, it is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, the eleventh one, God. I said, that's which one it is, the eleventh one. I got real quiet, real still. I'm waiting on him to speak. But in the middle of this, you know, my mind was rolling. I'm thinking of eleven, eleven, eleven. I'm going, okay, eleven, eleven. It's the eleventh hour. Is it the eleventh hour, God? Is that what you're trying to say? I said, God, what is it? Well, eleven, eleven. There was there was twelve disciples, went, one went bad, there was eleven left. I thought, hmm, one of them denied Jesus, another 10 run off. Psh, no, it ain't them. I'm standing there like this right here. I said, I see the 11th one. And it was like he whispered. He said, have you fully described it yet? So I'm standing there and I'm, like, I'm going, it's the 11th. I said, no, I hadn't fully described it because I hadn't counted from this way. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I said, God, it's the eleventh one by the eleventh one. He gave me two elevens. That's like confirmation, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about when God speaks to you twice? It's like confirmation. But my mind wasn't finished, and he knew my mind wasn't finished because if I counted something that way and I counted something that way, I got to multiply it. I mean, you, you know, if you're looking for square footage, you're looking for the circumference of how many you got there, then you finding out you got to multiply that by that. And I said, God, 11 by 11. I said, I tell you, God, this, this is which one I'm looking at. I'm looking at the 121st one. Because 11 times 11 is 121. He said, and what does that mean to you? I said, God, I said 121. I said, they ain't, they ain't but one book in the Bible that's got 121 chapters. And I said, that's the book of Psalms. And Psalms 121 says, Psalms 121, and I knew it. I'm standing right here with my head like this right here. I said, God, Psalms 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which come my help. <laughs> my help, it comes from you. <laughs> God will speak to you if you let him. He'll tell you exactly what he wants you to know if you let him speak. I was just standing right here saying, God, we need your help. God, I need your help. He took me through all of that just to get me to Psalms 121 to tell me, I am your help. I am your help. This is what he said in Psalms 121. He said, I don't slumber nor do I ever sleep. He said the sun won't strike you by day, nor the moon by night. He said lift up your eyes to me because that's where you get your help from. Praise God. You know what? We pray a lot of times around here, God sends somebody to drop a million and a half, $1.5 million. We, we do, we pray for that. I just, I talked to an overseer this past week. Not the overseer of the Church of God, the overseer of Pentecostal Church. That church right across the street over there. It's sitting over there empty. It's sitting over there with a for sale sign in front of it. Every time I drive by it, it saddens my heart. I don't know if it saddens you, but it saddens my heart. That, that parcel of land, about five or six acres, was dedicated to the Lord. And now it's up for sale. And we need it. I'm, I say we need it. You know why we need it? We got ministry around here that we've done outgrown. Miss Jennifer's ministry, she got, she got a Walmart up there, I promise you. She got Walmart. And, and then Miss Juanita and, and that group back there, the, all the food pantry people that do such a great job on Tuesdays. No, let me take that back. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because that's not just a two-day thing. They work in that thing about five, six days a week back there. And it's slammed full. We need room. And I said, God, I said, you want to give us that? I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in touch with that overseer. Sister Looney happened to find out that it used to be her former pastor when she was down there in uh, Lake City. And so she gave me his number. I called him up. I thought, you know, I'm talking to a state overseer. There's, or I'm going to call a state overseer. There's no way he's going to talk to me, especially I ain't even in his church. He got enough trouble with pastors, especially outside the church of God. He, he ain't got time for me. That's what I was thinking. Anybody ever do that? Anybody try to reason out of it before you ever get into it? I said, God, I said, I'm going to call him. I said, I'm going to call him. Hopefully he'll answer. I called him. He didn't answer. I talked to his secretary. Secretary said, I'll tell him to call you back. Well, there my mind went again. Nah, he ain't going to call me back. He ain't going to call me back. There's no way. Man, my phone rang. I done put his name in my phone so I wouldn't miss it. So I wouldn't think that it was a spam call. Bishop Morris Smith, I said, hello? Put on my best pastor voice, hello? He said, is this 
Pastor Kenneth Murphy. I said, yes, sir. This is, this is Bishop Moore Smith from the Pentecostal Holiness. Assembly, no, they don't call themselves assembly. Anyway, he, he introduced himself. I said, it's good to talk to you. Thank you for calling me back. I said, listen, I said, this is hard for me to do. I said, but the Bible said you have not because you ask not. I said, you, I said, I'm the pastor here on Whiskey Road right across from one of your churches. And I said, I see you got it for sale. Yes. And I said, we ain't got the money to buy it. I'm not even trying to make you an offer. I'm just wanting to ask, would you like to donate it to us? And I could see him smiling on the other side of the phone. I, I mean, I, I knew it. I mean, I don't think he's going like, this dude has lost his mind. And he said, Brother Murphy, don't you feel bad for asking me that? He said, I've been exactly where you, you are. He said, and I've been around rich people that I've reached out to and asked them. Because you're right, you have not because you ask not. And he said, and I really wish we could do that for you. He said, however, we need those finances because we're trying to plant a church in Aiken. And so I said, okay, I, I, I appreciate your call. Here's the thing. I'm sure that conversation hadn't left his mind. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know whether God's going to give us that or not. I don't because I don't know. But I know one thing. I will keep lifting up my eyes to him because he's my help. I don't want you to think that this thing's about money because a lot of people, they, they get worried and they get worked up about Oh, every time you see somebody on ministry, they ask you for money. Look, I ain't asking for your money. I really ain't. I'm not. At... When it comes, I want God to do it. You understand what I'm saying? I want God to do it through somebody. He can do it through somebody here, or he can do it through somebody out there, or he can do it through somebody watching on that screen right there. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know he can do it. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. But listen, it ain't just me, it's you too. You lift up your eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. How many of you know he brings the victory? How many of you know he brings the victory? How many, how many, check this out. Y'all hold on a second. How many of y'all remember that old song? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine, victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, victory is mine. Oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today.
Can you praise God? Can you lift your hands up in victory today? Victory today. Listen, I'm going to get to this message. Not today. Don't get scared, but I'm going to get to this message. I was going to preach to you today on Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, my banner. He's the Lord, my victory. He's that banner that I wave. Hallelujah. Oh, I just wish I could explain it to you, but I'm here to tell you today, if you'll lift up the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, if you'll lift up the name of God, hallelujah, if you'll lift up the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I'm telling you, victory will be yours. And, and let me just give you a little insight on it. The Bible said that when Moses lifted his hands with the rod of God in his hands, Hallelujah, that Israel prevailed and they won the battle. But when his hands came down because he, he got weary and he got tired, then the enemy started winning the battle. So they slid a stone upon him and sit him down on the stone and two guys on either side, one guy on either side, lifted his hands and they helped his hands stay lifted. And as long as his hands stayed lifted with the rod of God in his hand, Israel won the battle, praise God, until the going down of the sun. I'm telling you today, we need to lift up the hands of people around us. We all need help. Praise God, we need to lift up Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It's him, it's he who gives the victory today, praise God. Can somebody lift your hands in the air in victory? And Victory sing it again. victory. Praise God. I'm so thankful for the victory. I'm so thankful that he brings the victory. Praise God. I'm telling you right now, anybody knows me, I don't like to lose. I don't care what I do. I go golfing with Jim every time he beats me. There ain't one time I've ever beat him. Every time I go, I'm out for victory. But I don't need to go with Jim. I need to go with somebody else. And I do every now and again. I go with somebody I can beat. <laughs> Woo! But I like to win. But I tell you, I like to watch Jim because he's good at it. Anybody like the victory? Anybody like to win? Praise God. Anybody want to see the devil get his due? Praise God. Anybody want to see God's people succeed? Hallelujah. Victory is ours in the name Oh, Jesus, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Anybody feel like they've been in church today? Anybody feel like they've been in the house of God, in the presence of God? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just does that. He just comes down and he touches, he starts moving. You know what I'm saying? He just starts moving. And I, and I, and I watch it and I'm going, like, you know, if y'all want it, come get it. If not, I'm going to preach. And when people just start stepping out and they start coming and you watch them. I, I've noticed it. I've had it happen in my life. If I'm standing still like this right here, everything's reserved. But as soon as I start stepping this way, stuff starts breaking on the inside. Before I get to the altar, I'm already starting to cry. I'm already starting to call out to God. Listen, don't ever act like the altar's not there for you. It's here for everybody in the house, everybody who needs something. We don't ever, in this church, there's one thing I don't ever want us to give up, and that's the altar. That we might change a lot of things around here, a lot of things God might lead us in different directions, but I don't think God will ever direct us away from having an altar call because it's at the altar where we lay our bodies as a living sacrifice across it and God can do something. God can do something in your mind. God can do something in your heart. God can do something in your soul. I'm telling you, God can do many things at the altar. It's where we fall and we break and we, and we give ourselves unto God and, and let God do a mighty work in us at the altar. So when I see people come, I ask God, God, what you want me to do? I mean, I, I can preach if you want me to. I'll preach, but if not, God, then we'll pray. We'll minister, and I, and, I, and I love to see people step out and get what they need from God. Hallelujah. Do you feel like you've got what you need today? Praise God, because if not, you can come now. We'll lay hands on you. We'll pray with you. We'll help you pray. Whatever you have need of today, we'll pray with you. Praise God, because victory is mine in the name of Jesus. He is my victory, praise God. Hallelujah. If everybody is satisfied in their soul, I used to hear them say it like that. If all minds and hearts are clear, we'll pray and dismiss. Or at least I'll pray and get out of the way and they can sing and y'all can sing and we'll shout and run. But I'll pray for you guys. Father, I pray, God, that you'd bless them. I pray, God, that you'd keep them. I pray, God, that your face shine upon them. I pray, God, that you'd be gracious unto them. I'm asking you, God, that you would give them your peace that surpasses all understanding. And I'm asking you, God, that you'd go with them this week and protect over them everything they do, God. Everything they put their hand to, God, that you would bless it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Go with them as they go to take God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Victory is mine, says the Lord. God bless you today as you go. Shake somebody's hand, hook their necks, tell them you Victory love them.